Week 4 sees rugby round the mountain come to a windswept Stratford, where Spotswood United can confirm their status as a top four contender with a good win today. But the Stratford boys should never be underestimated on their home turf. Instead, that's exactly what Spotswood did. They underestimated Stratford after jumping out to a commanding lead and then going to sleep. Stratford slowly but surely clawed their way back in a fascinating contest, scoring 18 unanswered second half points, including a late drop goal for a courageous and well-deserved win. Despite the best efforts of the referee, who blew a mind-numbing 34 penalties, and the strong wind which made throwing the ball around difficult at times, Stratford's stirring second half comeback made this an entertaining ball game. Early on, it looked to be heading for a rout, as Spotswood built up an 18-0 lead, finding plenty of room wide on the left. But when Stratford controversially lost hooker Simon Childs to the bin following a post-try stout, the decision fired the angry Red and Blacks into action. Trailing 23-8 at the break, Stratford changed tactics, playing to their own strengths up front, holding on to the ball and keeping it away from Spotswood's dangerous outside backs. Oh. Helped with a consistent stream of penalties and with Spotswood captain Tavita Cavanbarty sent to cool his heels in the bin, Stratford patiently built its score, drawing even to set up a tense finish. Hard on attack, Stratford came close to crossing the line several times. And after taking the lead through Cody Hall's choppy, the home side held on as the clock wound down. Stratford coach Chris Drummond was an understandably happy man after the whistle. Uh, Chris, outstanding result. Um, lots of heart shown by your team. Yeah, um, the second half we sort of had to come out there and, uh, and, and do the damage and just sort of deny them the ball. Um, you know, going wide with Perez, you know, obviously a threat out there. So our game plan in the second half was just to take it up front, and uh, because we knew we had the water on them, you know, up, up close, so uh, and set piece and everything. So yeah, got a few uh, a few penalties going your way. Yeah, I had a little bit of a chat to the referee at half time about uh, them going over and killing a lot of ball at ruck time. Um, maybe he listened to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it seems t t tide did seem to turn our way. So yeah, mm. yeah, pretty pleasing. If there was a defining moment in this game, uh, what, when would you think that would have been? Maybe the halftime talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we just did the boys. I uh, went into the halftime talk, and uh, they were saying everything we, we wanted to say. So they knew what we had to do, um, and they came out and did it. To be mm. honest, yeah, yeah. To me, that was a defining moment. Half yeah. Time. yeah. And this uh, must be a, a positive result going forward. Very positive result. Uh, as as we uh, was mentioned in the paper, you know, we're we're striving for top six in this first round. So uh, that's definitely a, a big step forward for that. Uh, Alpha next week, always a big, big grudge match down there. So uh, you know we need to front again for that. Um, but that's one we're definitely targeting as well. Okay, excellent. Well, congratulations, Chris. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. In Inglewood, Southern handed last year's runner-up their third straight defeat, while Two Copper had to work hard for a 22-20 win over Clifton. Old Boys and Coastal both had easy wins. Two Copper remains on top of the table with Coastal and Old Boys leading the chase. Behind them, Spotswood, Clifton, Southern and Stratford are all close on the table, while Inglewood, Border and Eltham Karponga are languishing at the bottom. Spotswood will try to bounce back against Two Copper, Southern and Clifton will do battle in Harborough, and in the feature match, Coastal travels to New Plymouth for a big game against Old Boys. <laughs>